question. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. I've forgotten to, to record. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Uh, Proverbs 4, verse 7. Right, 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 right. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. Imagine when someone tells you this. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. And whatever else you do, develop good judgment, right? What is pretty much saying here is that wisdom makes you have a sound judgment, develop good judgment. Getting wisdom is the wisest thing you can do. Without wisdom, relationships struggle. You need to get wisdom, even in relationships. How do you handle your spouse? How do you handle yourself? How do you handle your children? How do you handle your siblings? Right? How do you hang the people that are around you? Even in church, you, you are in relationships with people. If you are not wise, you can destroy a good relationship that was later on going to bear fruit in, in, in your life. So it's very important to get wisdom. Now, our foundational scripture that we looked at last week was based on Matthew 19, 3 verses, from Matthew 19 from verses 3 to, to 9. Right. Some Pharisees came and tried to trap him with this question. It was a question on relationships. Should a man be allowed to divorce his wife for just any reason? Remember, every relationship, the relationships that we have, it started with Adam and Eve. He was married to produce children. So when you destroy the marriage, marriage relationship, marital relationship, you destroy that, you destroy families, you destroy people. You destroy communities. So they come to Jesus. They are asking him a question on a marriage relationship, which is very important. You know, many people that I deal with as a pastor, like in terms of counseling and everything else, you discover they come from broken homes, come from a, a home where it has been wrecked by maybe a failed relationship and, and stuff like that. It, it's pretty much traumatic. It causes trauma. You know, we grow up in homes that were broken up. The enemy is working mightily. So what we need? Wisdom. We need wisdom, right? So they come to Jesus. They are questioning Jesus. Listen to what Jesus says. His answer, which really touched my heart. This is why I'm teaching it from Matthew 19, right? Building up our case from Matthew 19. Haven't you read the scriptures? That is Jesus. I like what he says. Haven't you read the scriptures? Haven't you read? the scriptures, he referred them to the way, right? See, what I said here about the scriptures, number one, the point I made was building a strong foundation that in our relationships, we have to know the scriptures. Jesus referred them to the scriptures. He did not refer them to his own opinion. Well, I'm Jesus, you know, this is what I think. You know, that countless times we build our relationships from opinions. We build our relationships from a culture. Sometimes that culture is fallen. You know, there are some people that will defend the culture more than they will defend the word of God. If the word of God says to the right, right, and the culture is saying to the left, they will take what the culture says. Jesus brought them to the scriptures. What does the scripture say? Haven't you read? That is the foundation. If we are to build, whether your relationship right now that you are in is a marriage, what does the Bible say? about marriage. What scriptures do you have? That's what we are going to be talking about. Glory to God. Not today, but you know, next week, we'll look at the marriage relationship. <laughs> now, Jesus replied, they record that from the beginning as the foundation. They built a strong foundation from the beginning. God made the male and female, right? So, number two, what I addressed was the original intent. God made the male and female. Now, in this original intent, intent, God's original intent, God's original plan. Why did we go this way? Because, what's this? We need to know why we were created. Why were we created? Why did God create us? You know, why are we here? Who created us? Says God made them. This is Jesus. God made them. And today, what I want to add in this God's original intent, uh, I, I spoke of the individual identity. Your identity as an individual. This is probably what I might be talking about uh, today. Your individual identity, who you are, who you are 
who I am as a male, who you are as a female, before any marriage. Because if we don't address this as individuals, it becomes hard. Whether you have been in a relationship before the relationship has been broken, if you don't know who you are, your identity, it becomes hard to relate with people, right? It becomes hard to relate with people. Remember, the devil attacks the relationships. But the first thing that he attacks, it is you. Who you are is an individual. You know, we watched this um, uh, this show with my wife yesterday. It was my wife's birthday day, so you know, <laughs> I nearly forgot to mention this, which is very, very, very important, All right? I was just celebrating my wife yesterday, so it was her birthday day. It's just awesome, brilliant, you know, great woman. God, I thank God for for her life since we are talking about relationships. So I just want to take this opportunity to thank God for a wonderful wife that He has given me. She, she's just a joy to me glory to god she is a tremendous tremendous blessing to me you know i really love and appreciate my wife you know she's just so phenomenal so i celebrate you daddy happy birthday again we are still celebrating we haven't finished so anyway coming back to 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 to, to where we are right god's original intent individually identity if you don't know who you are as an individual gonna be hard before any marriage, before anything, you need to know who you are. God made the male and female. Whether you are in a failed relationship, when you come back, who are you? God made you. We are made in the image of God. Who is this God? This is what I want to insert today that I did not talk about uh, on Sunday. Who is God? Who is God? It says God made them, right? Let's look at this, right? Uh, my notes here. Hmm. Before a relationship, we need to know our identity, right? Uh, Genesis 1, 26 to 27. Then God said, let us make human beings in our image to be like us, to be like us. Thank you, Jesus. Let us, let us make human beings in our image to be like us. As an individual, you are created to be like God, right? We get our identity from God. God is love. Glory to God. God is love. So here, as an individual, I need to know who God is. Right? God is love. Imagine, if I'm created in the image of God, after his likeness, his likeness, that is love. The love of God. God is love. He loves me. Right? He created me in his likeness. That is love. Why do we go back to the individual identity? Because I need to know that God created me. I need to know the one who created me. He created me to be like him. So if I know this before a relationship, when I relate with somebody, the purpose of me relating with that person, like my wife, right, is to reflect God. So anything inside of me that does not reflect God, I need to deal with it. How do I deal with it? Coming back to the individual identity. No, no. This is not how God will act. This is not how. It, 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 it might be hard. You know, what they might be doing might not really be a good thing. But if I know who I am, the struggle with the many of God's children is identity. Right? We don't know we are created in the image and the likeness of God. So we allow people to influence who we are. We don't allow God to influence who we are. Jesus' reply was this. From the beginning, God made them male and female. God made them. He separated male and he separated female. God made them. You are made by God. So no matter what you have gone through, you go back. That is what is going to heal the trauma. That is what is going to change and transform your perspective. That is what is going to challenge your belief system, how you think about marriage, how you think even about parenting your children, how you raise up your children. If you know who you are, I'm telling you, it will change you. The church or the world in general, it is full of people that do not know who they are. They don't know their identity. If you don't know your identity in Christ and you enter into a relationship, it's going to be hard. It's not the, these relationships that we have with each other. 
these vertical relationships that we have with each other, glory to God, that we get our identity from. Absolutely not. It is that horizontal relationship, my relationship with my heavenly father, what God says to me. Because if I'm empty on the inside, right? If I'm empty on the inside here, I have not come to the revelation of my identity in God. And I'm expecting my wife to try and bring the best out of me. I'm going to struggle. Glory to Jesus. I am going to struggle. But if I know that I'm created in the image and the likeness of God, and I spend time investing in Jesus, knowing Jesus, becoming one like Jesus, I'm telling you, glory to God. In that relationship, I start reflecting Jesus. But if I don't know Jesus, I become frustrated. There are many people are frustrated because they don't know who they are. Even when they are going for, 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 for services, I want people to pray for me, people to pray for my marriage, to pray for this. I believe strongly that we need to bring people to their identity, who they are. Because if we, they don't come to their identity, no matter how we pray, we can, it could be demonic, we can cast out the devil, right? We can teach, but if people don't know who they are, you can't relate with somebody if you don't know who you are. We have to know who we are. In your pain, in your head, there are many Christians, some probably have been in relationships that were bad, very bad, come to church, but they never were healed from those relationships. So if you are never healed in that relationship and you don't come to the revelation of your identity uh, in Christ, who you are, what God has done inside of you that you are created in the image and in the likeness of God, I'm telling you, it becomes hard, it becomes difficult even to be a parent because you are going to pass your trauma to your children, right? Because every time they, uh, you don't know what your father did to me. You don't know what your mother did to me. Women are like this. Wives are like this. Uh, men are like this. You see, it's because you allowed somebody else dysfunction to cause you also to operate in a dysfunction. That is not God. You see, Jesus brought them to the beginning. Haven't you read the scriptures? Jesus replied, they record that from the beginning, God made them. Do you know when we come to the revelation that God made me, even in a bad relationship, right? When I begin to seek God, God, how do I stand here? How, 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 how do I stand here? You will discover that even in that bad relationship, God begins to build me up. God begins to change me. God begins to, to transform me. Glory to God. In that relationship, God begins to wake on the inside of me, to change me, to transform me. Because if I'm not transformed, if I'm not changed, my brothers and sisters, there is no magic in Christianity. Absolutely. God has to work in us first. He uses people to transform people. So here, in the original intent, the individual identity, I really need to know who I am before my wife comes into play. If I don't know, I'm telling you, that's a struggle, right? That is a struggle. That is a struggle. Right, 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 right. So I need to know. Now, then what I spoke of was decluttering the closet, right? The decluttering the closet is this. Sometimes there are belief systems that we have inherited that are bad. And these belief systems, they can affect our relationship with each other, right? It's a belief system that you inherit from people that are not scriptural. Right? When you inherit those belief systems, you might be even singly and there is somebody that is coming your way. You might not see them, right? Because of a belief system. A belief system is the way you think. So we have to declutter that closet. How do you think about relationships? How do you think about marriage? It could be influenced by the world, not by Christ, right? How you think about something, it will affect how you operate in that relationship. Jesus said, this explains a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. I want you to take note. This explains, to explain something, an explanation brings wisdom and understanding. 
Jesus said, this explains, he's talking to the Pharisees. Remember what the Pharisees were. They were the religious experts of their time. But Jesus here, he brings it up on a higher level. This explains, a man shall leave his father a man, which means his belief system was based on what he saw at home, what he saw his father, what he saw his mother, what he saw his parents doing. So if our fathers and mothers were not Christians, what is our belief system on relationship? Right. If my father was not a man of God or my mother was not a woman of God, what is my belief on relationship? Already my belief system that I have on relationship will be what? It won't be a good belief system. So I need a change. Sometimes, watch this, Jesus went back to the scriptures. Sometimes the belief system that we have is what we heard the preachers say without the scriptures. They shared their experiences. And then we got on the inside of us what they were saying. It created a belief system which ends up affecting what a relationship ought to be. Let me give you an example. I had a very bad belief system. You know, when I got married to my wife, I thought she has come into my house. Now she has come to my house. Whatever has to do with the his with the, her family is is the hair is is the hair family. Glory. It has nothing to do with even her. Financially, she should not even give your family anything. You know, and you paid low well, She now belongs to you. That's a wrong belief system. And funny enough, there are many Christians with such belief systems. Right? So those belief systems, they have to be destroyed. They have to be dismantled. Right? The, in those belief systems, that's a way. This is how I have to treat my in-laws. Right? That's a belief system which is not biblical enough. That was a belief system. I had to grow out of it. I had to come out of that belief system as I discovered that relationship that my wife didn't follow from a tree. That the way I treat my parents is the same way I ought to treat her parents. You know, that was a belief system. How many people fight in relationships because of that belief system? Decluttering the closet. What's your belief system? You can have a belief system that I have for me as a man, I don't cook, I don't do this. Then you come into a country where both of you are working. What do you do with that belief system? Now, if that is the belief system, what happens to that relationship? It suffers. Many relationships in England are struggling because of that. There was a woman who went into depression. Now she brought a wife, yeah, she brought a, yeah, these things happen. This day. She brought a husband from Africa. The husband came and was not working, but was sitting at home doing nothing. The husband expected the wife to come to cook, to do everything, while it's the wife was doing long days and everything. And why he, he could sit, he could not even look for a job, because I want to do the job that I'm qualified to do. Right? The woman went into, into depression. Then the man says, why did you not tell me that you were struggling? As if he didn't see. It was a belief system. Belief systems, they make us see things from a very crooked angle. And God says he will make a crooked way, what? Straight. So there is nothing as important as a belief system. Many are praying, I'm not a praying for a relationship. Mm -mm. And God is saying, no, if I bring a relationship to you, deal with the closet. What is in your closet first? You might be praying for restoration in marriage, yet it is not the prayer that you should be praying about. It is decluttering the closet. You have to declutter that closet. You have to change the way you see things. You know, you have to see it through the word of God. That's why it's important to understand God is love. Glory to God. To understand that God. There are many people that live good wives, live good, 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 good husbands because of a belief system. A belief system is very, very important. I've seen many people praying. I, I'm casting this demon. I'm coming against this demon. But if a belief system is not, is not attacked, if you, we don't change our belief system, we have to attack our belief system through scripture to have a good, solid, biblical belief system that is based on who God is. We are Christians. As Christians, I should not allow anything that has to do with my culture. You know, I did talk about culture here, down here, dealing with cultural norms. So it's all linked together. So we'll mix it together. <laughs> Glory to God. Anything that is linked with my culture, that is contrary to what the word of God says. 
I need to radically deal with it. Right? I have to come against it because it creates how I see the world. It creates how I see that relationship. That is not wisdom at all. Then that relationship, it collapses. It could have been a good relationship, but my belief system was wrong. You know, there are many people don't want to change the way they, they see things, right? The way they see things, they don't want to, 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 to change. You know, listen to what we say. This is the way I am. My father before me, my grandfather before me, I don't turn, right? I only turn when I'm sleeping, right? This is the way I am. I've been raised in such a way. I've been raised in such a way. But if we are Christians, Romans talk too. Uh, I want us to go there about the belief system because I think this is this is very important. Romans 12, verse 2, New Living Translation. My sister Abby will put it there for us. But I, I'll read for us, right? Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Don't copy them. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. But let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. I love what he says. Let God transform you into a new person. Right? So what did I do? I to come back to God. God teach me, guide me, lead me. How do I carry myself in my relationships? Whether it's my relationship with my wife, whether it's my relationship with the people around me, how do I carry myself? Do I allow my culture? Do I allow what my father used to do or my grandfather used to do? And then so my grandfather was a hard man, so I ought to be a hard man. Have you had many people that boast of such things? That's a belief system that is wrong. They need to declutter the closet. But what's your belief system? But what do you think about your relationship? What do you think about marriage? What do you think? Even when you are singing, what do you think about being singing? What do you think? See, if you have a wrong belief system and you get into a relationship, I'm telling you, it's going to be bad. It's going to be hard. You know, I've seen many people that have I had an uncle of mine, you know, wonderful uncle of mine, right? He divorced three times. Every time the problem was this wife did this, that wife did this. A belief system. Right. A belief system that is not put into scrutiny through the word of God, it can cause you to be impaired in your vision in that relationship. Right. So what happens when we declutter the closet is we start seeing, we begin to see. You begin to see, oh, wow. My wife will respond this way if I do things this way. My husband will respond this way if I do things this way. Right. It's a belief system. What many are struggling with in relationship, it's a belief system. Right. And when we address belief system, we declutter through the word of God that no, I'm created in the image of God after his likeness. Right. That's the first thing. As an individual, I need to reflect God here. It's not about me. It's about growing this relationship. How do I grow this relationship? Glory to God. I have to change. Right. What's this? Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. Some of our belief system on relationship are based on the world. No one can do me like this. Yeah, yeah, have you had some people like that? Maybe they are here. <laughs> Glory to God. You, you, you can't do me like this. No, you, you, you can't. <laughs> you know, I, I cannot be used. No one can use me. That's a belief system. That is not rooted on scripture. Right? You need a belief system that is based on the word of God. What does God say about that thing? What does God say about a relationship? Right? It's very, very important. Don't copy the behavior and the custom of this world. But what's this? Let God transform you. Let God, which means I can refuse for God to transform me. I can, I can be stubborn, right? And no, I cannot change. And now that one we marry. Yeah, now she belongs to the Siziba clan. You know, whatever happens in the Kumbo's household, that is for the Kumbo's household. That is a wrong belief system that is destroying marriages. There are some that are in relationships, even the way they treat their in-laws in that relationship. It's a wrong belief system. Right? And it affects and it influences the relationship. So there has to be a transformation. Let God transform you. Let God transform you. Even in a relationship, in that relationship, you know, when we're talking about especially husband and wife relationship, you have to let God to transform you because marriage is for people that are dead. 
<laughs> right? You have to be dead to yourself to be in a relationship. If you are still alive, it's, it's, it's hard. I'm, I try to be alive. Glory to God. I'm slowly dying. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You know, when you are alive, that's not the, if your own, you want your own opinions, right? In a marriage, it, it has to be my way or it's the highway. <laughs> that's a wrong belief system, right? That's a, a belief system that is based on pride, on stubbornness, right? We are like God. It is never about God's way. You know, God says, come, let us reason together, right? Let, let us reason together. So when we, when, 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 when Romans 12 here says, let God transform you into a new person, what's this? By changing the way you think, by changing the way you think, then what's this? You will learn to know God's will for you, which is good, pleasing, and perfect. Right. Without being transformed in the way I think about relationships, it becomes hard to understand relationships. Now, the next point I want to make, the, one, the next point I want to make is called the deconstruct. I did not talk about this on, 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 on Sunday, the deconstruct. So I'm only left with two points, but I'm going to try and round up here. The deconstruct, the deconstruct is this, break things down, break things down, right? Break things down. Let's go to Genesis 2 from verses 7 to 8. Right? Let God transform you, right? So the next thing is break things down. That's what it means. Just begin to break things down. How did God create men? How did God create men? This is going to be a foundation for where we are going. Now, Genesis 2, uh, 7 to 8 and 15 and 18, I'll read this. Genesis 2, 7 and 8. Then the Lord God formed the men from the dust of the ground. Right? He breathed the breath of life into the men's nostrils, and the men became a living person. Right? So you are breaking things down. So I'm looking at this from my own perspective as a man. How God created me, thank you, Jesus, from the dust of the ground. Then God breathed unto me. Then the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he placed the man he had made. Right. Then verse 15, then the Lord God placed the man in the garden of Egypt to tend and watch over it. Right. He placed the man to tend and watch over it. Then the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just the right for him. So the deconstruct is this, what is a man? Right. What is a man? I have to come back. I want my mind to be renewed now. I need to deal with my the cultural norms. Because there are men when they are looking at um, relationship, they're looking at men from African men, English men, and this man. That's a wrong belief system. The deconstruct is we go back to God, how God created men. There is no English men, there is no black men, there is no African men. Right. There is a godly man, there is a wicked man. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. So let's go back. Right. What is a man? That's the mindset. What is a man? I want us to take note. A man is made of two components, dust and the breath of God. The dust, which is the lower part, that makes men interact with the physical world. And the breath of God, which is the spirit part, right? Many of us in relationships, we experience, maybe you are a wife or you are a mother, you have sons, right? Or you, 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 have, you have uncles, you are a niece, you have uncles or you are a nephew. We experience men from the lower part, the lower component, which is dust, right? The dust is the flesh. It is fragile, it's natural, it's earthy. It's what influences many relationships around us, right? Because Adam ate of a tree that he needed not to eat of, men died. So you discover that in relationship, when we are looking at relationship, even when we get married, we are looking at people from dust. We make decisions based on what we see in the flesh, right? But when we go to the disconstruct, we look at how God created men. We are addressing the single people here, right? Right. Those that are many. <laughs> you are married now. You have to pray a certain prayer. Pray for your husband to be saved, to be born again, to be full of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Right. That's another teaching for another day. Right. Because see, if you then, as a single person, 
you get married to somebody based on the flesh. They're going to hurt you. They're going to injure you. And when you get married to somebody based on the flesh, the dust of the ground, which is really, really bad, right? You get yourself tied up with somebody who is really fleshly, carnal. They don't know who God is. They are not in the image and the likeness of God. So what influences their decision making, everything they do is the flesh, right? It is the flesh. That's why it's very important to hear when you are a single young lady to pray, to pray, to humble yourself before God, to seek God, to seek godly counselors. Remember what the Bible says, a man shall live father and man and be united to his wife. Glory to God. So you want to know what a man is, right? So if that man that you get hooked up with, you get married to, you allow the system of the world, the mindset has not been renewed. Ooh. Hmm. It is trouble, right? It is trouble. You want to wait on God. You want to hear God. Now, saying this, sometimes here, when you walk with God, you have a strong relationship with God. And you are a person that hears God. Sometimes God can bring to us a seed. Are you getting what I'm saying? He can bring to us a seed, somebody that has not yet developed and became born again. I was not born again when my wife saw me. I, I was not saved. I didn't know God. But from the advice, around it, the people that were around it, that helped it to make a decision, to make a choice after all the young men that were going after it, they said, choose that one, choose that one. You know, they say, this is the lady who was a neighbor, they call. Now I'm getting ahead of myself, right? This was a neighbor who was, uh, you know, a neighbor who was, uh, a lady who was a neighbor, they call. He says, listen, I've seen, this young man's mother going to church, everything. I've seen her character. I've seen how she carries herself, right? There were many people, men, young men that were after him, right? But mostly it was dust, right? We were comparing notes <laughs> recently, looking at, so how did that one end? What happened to this one? I was like saying, you see how I rescued you? <laughs> if you did not say yes, you will be in trouble right now. You could have faced trouble. You see, it's very important here when you are a single young lady, right? To seek counsel, to have people around you that have the eye of the spirit to help you. Because man is made of two components, the dust and the breath of God, right? If you just get wooed, with the dust, the appearance. They might have money, they might have education. One of the guys had a good education that was after my wife. He later on became a GP, but that did not end well. You know, I think it's been in multiple relationships. I don't know, right? But things didn't end well. We are still together after 20 something years, right? See, what am I talking about? If you allow, what's this? A mind said, of the world that has not been decluttered to influence your decision making. You make errors. You make errors. So deconstruct is you go back to God. A man is made of two components. The breath of God, that is the spiritual aspect of man. It is what makes a man connect with God. Right? It is what makes a man a man according to God. Right, according to God, any as it's God, not me. This is God. This is the word of God. Remember, Jesus got us to the word. According to God, a man, right, is the breath of God. He is alive spiritually. He knows God, right? He knows God. He is in a relationship with the God. That's why when you are saying you ask this question, so what do you think about Jesus? What do you think about God? If the answer is not forthcoming. Run, baby, run. Unless by God himself giving you a revelation that, no, don't worry. I'm waking a mighty waking. It's like, this one is a seed. Unless God, you know, and this one, even if it is God, you need to heal. You need to, 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 to spend the time in prayer, to spend the time with the people that really know God, that are rooted and are grounded to God. Because if you don't, 
There is nothing as bad as making a, a, a relationship mistake when you start out, because that will set the trajectory of your life the opposite direction. It will set you off in a path that you don't want to go to. It will affect you, affect your relationship, because marriage is not just about you, right? Relationship is not about you. Children will come out of that. Like, let's go deeper. Like, what do you mean? The breath of God is strong, supernatural, heavenly. And this is what should influence our relationships as men. So if that man does not have a relationship with Jesus, what you are seeing is the dust. And you make a decision based on the dust. Last week at church, I said, that's why many women are asthmatic. <laughs> They've got COPD. They cannot breathe. Because you see, you are relating with the dust, right? You only got married to the wrong component. Now, the spiritual aspect of a man, it grows as he grows in a relationship. With, with, with God. So the relationship that a man ought to have, this is what God has begun to teach me now, ages ago when I you know, spent time in this topic, is that no, as long as you are in a relationship with me, you can be in a relationship which is vibrant with your wife, with your children. But if that relationship with me is cut off, the decision making that you will make in your house is going to be work, it's going to be bad, it's going to influence even your wife, it's going to influence even your children. Right? That is wisdom. See, when God created Adam, God had a relationship with Adam. God placed Adam in a garden. They were in a fellowship. That is what sustained the spiritual aspect of the man. That is what God, that is what the devil is after in a man, a relationship with God. Glory to God. If you study, you do your own study. Go to churches right now. You discover that most churches is always lady. That's wrong, right? We should have more men in the church. Why is it so? Because God created men first to have a relationship with men, to be one with that man. That is the disconstruct. This is us now letting God transform our minds. So there is the dust. So I need to be born again. I need to be changed as a man. I need to know Jesus. As a young lady, you need to, do you know Jesus? Glory to as a married person. If your husband doesn't know God, now you then need to give prayer points based on that. Father, <laughs> he's sleeping, he's not there. You are wearing his shoes, you are speaking in that. <laughs> in his area where he sleeps, his pillow, you are sleeping there, you are speaking in that. Lord, this man has to come to the revelation of who you are. Right? You make it your mission, right? As a, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself, right? Let, let, let me round up this. I'll come to, to the woman right now. Watch this. Ta, 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 ta. What made a man, what made a man was a relationship with God, a vision from God which was, remember what God said, he gave him a job, he had a job, he, to tend the garden, to look after the garden, yeah? Now you find someone doesn't have a job, they want to be in a relationship with you, they don't even have plans to have a job. Remember my sister, we ended up going into depression because the husband was sit, wouldn't do any work, right? That's not godly, that is not from God, <laughs> absolutely not. So you're going to strike him in that relationship, that relationship is going to be bad, it's not based on scripture. God made the male and female. God created Adam. He put Adam in a garden to look after the garden. A man with a relationship had a garden. That's what God called a man. Now, the next thing that God said to a man was this. Who had a job? Who had a relationship with God? It's not good for this man to be alone. Now, the point, last point I said I'll make, a, uh, I'll round up with, right? Not good enough. It is not good enough for this man, spiritual man, a relationship with God, he has a job, he has a responsibility, not good for a man to be alone. If that one does not have a relationship with Jesus, doesn't have a job, doesn't have, it's, it's okay for him to be alone. Let him be alone. Unless, unless, unless by a supernatural revelation, God has opened your eyes to show you, nah, this one is going to be great. This one is my servant. He's just going through transition at the minute. Hold on to him. That was me. I was going through transition. You know, thank you, Jesus. Lord, there are some men like that. But you need a personal revelation for that. 
right? You need God to speak to you. You need people around you because it's not good for a man in a relationship with God, a man who knows God, a man who has a job for him to be alone. Watch this, right? Verse 18 says, it's not good for a man to be alone. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he brought her to the man. Let's look at a woman. We round up here, right? Left with three minutes. Okay? God made a woman. A woman or a wife is made from a living substance. That is from a man. A wife came from a man. Came from that which was already created. Came from life. Right? Adam came from the dust of the ground. But a woman came from life. A woman came from life. Glory to God. Let us make, it was God. Let us make, God took time. The first person that the woman saw was God. It's a relationship. Jesus takes us back to the beginning. Right? The struggles, my brothers and sisters, in relationship is this. We move God out of the way. Then we start pointing guns at each other. That is not, a re that is not how it should be. We need to go back to our individual identity. Right? Let us make a suitable help for him. A suitable a help. This is good. I will make, right, that's verse 18. I will make a helper who is just right for him. A helper who is just right for him. A woman or a wife, right? A woman or a wife is from a living substance. That is from a man. God made a woman from a man and God took time to make this woman. It was God who made the woman. It was God who brought the woman to the man. It was God. Many men, right? Sometimes it's men of God. <laughs> Glory to God. That is a job. That in the presence of God. They don't see God. The Bible says, he that finds a wife finds a good thing. He that finds a wife finds a good thing, right? He that finds a wife finds a good thing. He obtains favor from the Lord. Why is it saying he that finds a wife? It doesn't say he that finds a woman, right? That's my wedding ring. Hopefully it can come on, right? right. That's my wedding ring is out, right? You can get a woman, put a ring on a finger. It doesn't make a wife. You just made that woman a wife yourself, right? The way God does it, God calls, what's this? Before a wedding ring, God calls that one a wife, right? The wedding ring just seals it. He that finds a wife, that's Proverbs 18.22. We are talking about wisdom. He that finds a wife. Why are you finding a wife? Because God is hiding it. Yeah, he's hiding here so that you can seek God. Faith. You are going in that relationship with God. You are, you are pouring your heart out to God. This is what I'm talking about. Having our, us declutter our closet. Because these things we don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. But when we go back to the way and discover how God made marriage, he created marriage, it becomes easy for us when we enter into relationship. He that finds a wife, God already called a, a wife, before a wedding ring. So we can call somebody a wife putting a, fee, a, a ring on their finger, yet they are not wives. There are many singly wives out there. Glory to God that are not yet married. There are many married women that are not wife material. There are many so-called <laughs> men that leave godly wives in the house and come out of the house to somebody that is going to destroy them. The book of Proverbs is full of that. And then what this does, it destroys the relationship. God made that woman a wife. He brought the woman to Adam. That's it. See, Adam was a man with, in a relationship with God. Eve was a woman that God brought to Adam. And the two became one flesh. That is why Jesus said, it is written, a man shall live his father and man become one flesh. So if we are to have our mind renewed in relationship, let's go back to the word of God. Let's begin to look at how everything started. Our mistakes, let's correct them. There are many, there are plenty, but it needs humility, the wisdom of God to operate mighty. It says, Lord, 
correct my mistakes. <clears throat> help me to correct me. Help me to be a helper. Help me to be that husband that you called me to be, to know you, to steward my house very well in Jesus' mighty name. Spirit of the living God, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your kindness this wonderful, wonderful evening. Lord, I pray. I thank you that you love everybody that has joined in today. Lord, I pray for our hearts that sometimes we have allowed the, the culture, we have allowed the world to influence our relationships. Spirit of the living God, I come against those demonic strongholds that the enemy has been using to destroy family. Teach us, Lord. Guide us, lead us. I pray for hearts that are tender, that are soft, hearts that are willing to unlearn what we have learned, which is wrong in this outside your word, so that we can learn that which your word instructs us. As Jesus demonstrated for us, what does scripture say? Father, help us to be a people that go back to the word, go back to the scripture, to correct ourselves and to live out what the scripture says in our relationship with each other. I bless each and every individual that is in this place, Lord. I pray that they will come to the revelation of their identity. I pray for those that do not yet know Jesus, that they will come to the revelation of Jesus. I pray for those, Father, that, that I can say, Father, we hear you, but hey, we didn't know these things, but now we are in a relationship. What do we do? Father, I thank you for your grace that is sufficient for us, your strength that is made perfect in weakness. Lord, I pray, Father God, for strategies, Lord, that will come out of the, the, your, your abundance, grace, out of heaven. Lord, you begin to give them strategies of how to be effective, Father, in those relationships. Sometimes there is tension, there is pressure. Lord, there is no unity, there is no oneness that the enemy has been operating. I come against the work of the enemy, but I pray, Father God, for strategies that come from you. I pray for hearts that will yield to the leadership of the Holy Spirit. That, Lord, as you direct them, as you lead them, you will grant them peace in a chaotic environment. And, Father, I also pray for a change. I speak order in that chaotic environment. I speak oneness, unity. I pray for household salvation in Jesus' mighty name. Glory to God. Our God is an, is an awesome God. <laughs> Till we meet again. <laughs> well, 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 I'm your host, Pastor Lord. We shall meet. Thank you, Jesus. Take, take it away, our our host in Jesus' name, glory to God.